Wayne, under his transformation, assuring him that he should speedily be disenchanted, and he predicted to him that he should find the king at Carduel in Wales on his return, and that all the other knights who had been on like quest would arrive there the same day as himself, and all this came to pass, as Merlin had said. Now the interpretation of this story, ladies and gentlemen, goes something like this. To those questioning the statement that men were ever born half-human, as it were, or that Merlin could be the son of an earth maiden and an inhabitant of another sphere, are referred to the Bible. You see, it says, quote, Sons of the gods, seeing that the daughters of men were fair, had intercourse with them, and children were born, unquote. Throughout the scriptures, incubi, beings of the air, are called gods. The soul, before it became submerged in matter, dwelt in a negative sphere, according to the mysteries, knowing neither good nor evil, never having had experience. The infinite allowed the souls to incarnate in flesh, that they might eat of the tree of life, and learn of life and death, good and evil. Now remember, this is the philosophy of the mysteries. It is in no way what I believe. The incubi, possessing not the four elements fire, air, earth, and water, cannot know immortality, but their children, through the instrumentality of earth mothers, pass under the law of humans, and having lived upon the earth may receive the blessing of immortality. Now remember the definition of the inscription placed upon the cross above Christ's, Christ's head, the definition that I read to you from the Dictionary of Freemasonry. To secure this great boon, the mother of Merlin summoned the priest, that through the power of priestly invocation he might be bound to earth and earth conditions. It was believed in those early days, and there is much truth back of the assertion, that the influence of the church being invoked was powerful enough to counteract or at least neutralize any inherited evil characteristics. It proved impossible to erase all traces of Merlin's non-earthly parentage, for he possessed an innate knowledge of the mysteries and also the power to use magic. Vortigern, the usurper who succeeded to the throne through murder, was in league with the black magicians. He consulted astrologers who prescribed a blood sacrifice to prevent further disaster. Now, the early knighthoods consisted of two classes of men those allied with the black magicians who resorted to blood sacrifice and other fiendish practices to appease the gods and those who seeking the holy grail defended their religion country and womanhood the building of the tower and its demolition may be interpreted in symbolic language as man in whom the higher and lower principles are constantly in a struggle for supremacy red signifies evil while good is always represented by white that was carried over in the old westerns where the good guy always wore the white hat and the bad guy always wore the black merlin a knight by birth understanding both black and white magic advised vortigern to free the two demons and allow them to battle to the death remember these are the demons within man the fight ended in the vanquishment of the red dragon or evil symbolic of the final event in every struggle between good and evil forces this was the beginning of the downfall of Vortigern. Having depended upon evil for support, he was left helpless at the death of his ally. With the return of Uther and Pendragon and their armies, Vortigern was defeated and burned alive in his castle. Now translated with the aid of symbolism, the defeat would read as follows, ladies and gentlemen. Every life, devoted and upheld by evil forces, sooner or later faces destruction. When his race is run, the powers of good forsake him, and evil continues the work of annihilation. Every human being is given the power of choosing whom he will serve. If he surrenders to evil, he, not God, pronounces his doom. But thou avengest what men commit against themselves, seeing when they sin against thee, they do wickedly against their own souls and iniquity gives itself the lie by corrupting and perverting their nature. And, of course, 
The end is darkness, death, destruction. Merlin, because of magical arts, was chief advisor to the new king. White magic in the knightly brotherhoods was a religion scientifically based on demonstrable laws, manifested through invocations. Though strong, there was one weak spot in the armor of Merlin. The beauty and seductiveness of a woman brought him to desolation. Through the weakness of his love nature, he permitted himself to break the greatest of all oaths, that oath of secrecy taken by all knights to protect the secrets of the order even to the death. The result, ladies and gentlemen, was automatic. The law is inexorable. Those who betray shall be betrayed. Entrusting to the love and loyalty of the woman whose secrets committed to his keeping, he made her the executor of the decree of his oath. In taking the oath of knighthood, man is supposed to be free from all slavery. Whether sex or habit, before presenting himself for membership. Otherwise, he but places himself in a position of pearl and jeopardizes his soul. The legends of Merlin and Samson are alike in outline and meaning. Both became slaves of women, casting aside honor, truth, and loyalty. The foundation stones of the power of the knight of the order are the master of the mysteries. The pitiful picture of Merlin in his last speech to any man is significant. You see, imprisoned in the tower of his disloyalty, he yet remembers the quest of knighthood, and he sends word to King Arthur, charging him to seek the Holy Grail, and that the knight destined to find it has already been born. The legends of Eros and Psyche, which we explored in the earlier episode of The Hour of the Time, and this legend of Merlin illustrate the most important lessons in the career of a knight. In the first, the effects of doubt, fear, and disobedience are brought to mind. The second charges him to conserve his strength and forces, to preserve an independence of all slavish habits, to protect and defend his oath, to hold in remembrance the sacredness of the mission of the search for the Holy Grail. And remember, in the earlier hour, ladies and gentlemen, we learned that to the mysteries, the Holy Grail represents the soul. The soul. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. And they don't even believe that most people have a soul until they prepare the body to receive it. <laughs> so, you are learning. You are learning much faster than you ever could on your own. Skipping ahead, in this respect, the pyramid is a perfect symbol of man when he has reached the state called illumination of soul, or soul consciousness, or in other words, has found the center, or located the all-seeing eye. Skipping ahead again, may we look to masonry in completing the great work, or will it continue to be purely materialistic? Let this be the mission of masonry to perfect the work for which its outer symbology stands. Shall it be so? This is an admission that they are purely materialistic at this point and have been throughout their history. While this is truly a Masonic work, the work for which the Mason has made a good foundation when he has completed his three degrees, yet it is also a work for every man, and especially a work for those who have taken up, or who have opportunity and inclination to take up, the special training offered freely today by the representatives of the ancient schools through the Illuminati, Sons of Osiris, Magi, and other fraternities. Skipping ahead again, several pages. The fire philosophy is the basis of all religious mysteries and all the secret philosophies of the universe. It is also the underlying principle on which all secret occult brotherhoods are founded. It was taught in the ancient mysteries, and although the knowledge of it has long been lost to the world, it has always been preserved in the occult fraternities. 
the aim of all true initiation, no matter what the name of the fraternity may be, is to know the nature of the secret fire that regenerates the world and which renders him who comes into its possession immortal. The mystic has always held that masonry was one of the basis 